what a ride. Having my molecules spread across the galaxy really sets my nerves on edge. Did everything end up in the right place? Ah, welcome to Suzecon 2021 Edge World, everyone. I'm Thomas Di Giacomo, Chief Technology Officer for Suze. In the next few minutes, I'll share with you details about Suze Edge, our industry leading offering that Shang Liang, Suze's President of Engineering and Innovation, touched on in his Suzecon keynote earlier. We will also see the power of a shared vision materialize and take a glimpse into the future through some stellar guests. At KubeCon last year, both Keith Basil, Vice President of Product for Rancher, and I spoke on Edge. You might recall that this was before Suzu and Rancher joined forces, so we spoke independently. You also may recall that Basil and I told similar stories around the notion that Cloud Native is also Edge Native. Even then, we were sharing a vision of an Edge-centric world where Edge is projected to be four times larger than clouds and generating 75% of the world's data by 2025. Now, as one company and as colleagues, we are really excited about our single vision for Edge, our engineering synergies, and the innovation we are delivering in our products. Basil, how do you remember it? I remember it exactly the same way, Thomas a shared vision and an excitement for what is happening at the edge, every edge. Hello everyone, I'm Keith Basil, Vice President of Cloud Native Infrastructure, now and proudly I might add, for SUSE. Sorry that I can't be there on Edge World with you in person. I'm on an ongoing mission exploring the edge of technical possibilities. You know, going boldly where no one has gone before. Yeah, that was bad, Basil. To the entire crew of the Starship SUSE, I apologize. Okay, back to our vision for Edge. What does this mean for our customers? You know, it means the leading foundational technologies for any Edge are available from one company, SUSE, and in one package, SUSE Edge. We've taken the guesswork out of picking the best tools for the job. We've delivered the industry's only enterprise-ready Linux operating system, SUSE Linux Enterprise Micro, built specifically for Edge compute and the industry's only certified lightweight Kubernetes distribution, K3S. Then, we've packaged them with SUSE Rancher for containerized edges and SUSE Manager for non-containerized edges so our customers, that will be all of you, can deploy and manage production-grade Kubernetes clusters at any scale with centralized authentication, access control, and observability. This means that you can confidently innovate at the edges and do it knowing that SUSE is right beside you with enterprise-grade support. Did you notice I said edges, plural? You probably have lots of edges, near, far, and tiny. Near edge is close to the clouds, far edge is closer to the local data and compute, and the tiny edge is all the sensors and actuators living on the edge. What SUSE is delivering to you is a truly open, lightweight software infrastructure for building, deploying, and managing cloud-native applications across all your edges and connecting those edges to your clouds, public and private, and to your data centers with automation, security, and a common management framework. Merveilleux. That's exactly what our customers have asked for. This will definitely accelerate edge innovation. This is beyond 10. Can you say warp factor 11, Thomas? The new SUSE Edge delivers a cloud-native variant of SLEE Micro, which is our lightweight and secure OS built from the ground up for Edge applications. SLEE Micro leverages the enterprise-hardened components of SUSE Linux Enterprise, so you get an ultra-reliable infrastructure platform that's simple to use and comes out of the box with best-in-class compliance. Did I mention this is the only enterprise-ready Linux OS built specifically for the Edge? Yes, I did, and I so enjoy saying that. And speaking of only, again, SUSE Edge also includes the industry's only lightweight certified Kubernetes distribution, K3S. It's a single binary for x86 and ARM processors that's under 40 megabytes and is perfect for running production workloads inside Edge appliances or at the network Edge. K3S will run on most everything from a Raspberry Pi to a 32 gig AWS instance. Then, 
For maximum security and reliability, SUSE Edge includes Rancher. This is mission control for all your Edge Deploy clusters. SUSE Rancher addresses the needs of DevOps teams deploying applications with Kubernetes and IT staff delivering critical services to the Edge. Fantastic. SUSE is taking the complexity out of Edge infrastructure, bringing the right pieces together to be a force multiplier. This will make it easier to build modern cloud native applications quickly and manage them no matter where they are deployed. You know, the thing I love most about all of this is that it's not just a vision, it's real. Real software, real solutions, and real users. I've asked some of our cutting edge users and partners to join us today to tell us about the journey to the edge with Susan. Let's welcome first John Terpstra, distinguished engineer from Dell Technologies Edge Solutions team. On screen, please. John, thank you for joining us at SuzuCon Edge World 2021. Hello, Thomas. Thank you for having me. Dell has been a great friend to the open source communities and a trusted partner to SUSE for years. Can you tell me a bit about your edge strategy and what your customers are saying? Dell spends a lot of time just listening to our customers. Whether they're in retail and focused on tying their point of sale to their marketing automation system, or manufacturers adding sensors and compute power to the manufacturing floor. Even our telco and media customers that are moving access and content closer to their consumers, the stories are very similar. Edge is here to stay, but it's a complicated area. As you noted earlier, about 75% of all data will be generated at the edge in just a few years. That's petabytes of, from billions of edge devices outside of the traditional data center that need to be deployed and managed so that the data that is generated at the edge can be turned into actionable intelligence in a seamless, always secure interchange. Research has shown that the proliferation of snowflake devices at the edge is just not economically sustainable. Our customers tell us that the cost of putting thousands of differing unique edge devices to work is expensive, prone to error, and presents unacceptable security risks. In short, our customers in every industry want an open, lightweight, secure, and highly available ecosystem that will run production-ready workloads equally well across unattended, resource-constrained, remote locations or inside IoT applications. That's a tall order, John. How will Dell fulfill it? I could just say thoughtfully, diligently, and at light speed, but I won't. Dell and SUSE must deliver the best value for our joint customers. It's in our best interest to deliver to our customers a Kubernetes ecosystem that works right out of the box, at the edge, in the cloud, and in the data center. That means we need an application continuum that runs on small devices and only two core, two gigabyte memory, as well as the big iron that powers the cloud and data centers. And it must be managed throughout its entire life cycle by a common framework. Our customers want repeatable ease of use, Therefore, we want to modernize compute systems, applications, and processes in new and heritage environments. But most of all, we want our joint customers to turn the constellation of devices and edge-generated data into actionable insights and competitive differentiation. So to your question, how will we fulfill our joint customers' tall order? The answer is together. That's our vision, Thomas. And I know it's one we share with SUSE. Terpstra out. Awesome. Thank you, John. We really appreciate our partnership with Dell. We certainly do. We're committed to our ongoing, deep working relationship with Dell and others. Thomas, I took the liberty of inviting a couple of guests as well, bringing Ken Cato online now. Ken is a Presidential Innovation Fellow working with the United States Navy. Welcome aboard, Ken. 
Very glad to be here, Basil. As a Presidential Innovation Fellow, you and a very select few others are at the forefront of solving some very complex issues. What can you share with us about the Presidential Innovation Fellow Program and your specific projects? The PIP program was founded as a White House initiative as a means to bring industry leading technologists into the government to tackle complex problems. As a PIF, we're detailed to specific agencies and undetailed to the Department of the Navy. As a PIF in the Department of the Navy, I began a Pathfinder or an exploratory initiative called Black Pearl. Black Pearl was created to solve two things. Number one, cloud native platform for development. And number two, to teach folks the fundamentals for culture change with DevSecOps and for agile development. Our mission is to enable software development across various programs within the Department of the Navy. We since have graduated from our Pathfinder status and have scaled to support edge use cases on mission platforms. Edge computing is near and dear to me as a technologist in many industries. There's a need for speed of relevance. Having compute resources available to interact with data in a timely, meaningful way. The need is just as acute across government, and especially in the Department of Navy. We built Black Pearl's platform baseline lighthouse on Sousa Rancher Government RKE2. We chose it because it meets the stringent requirements for the Department of Defense for information processing. Plus, the Sousa Rancher Government Services team works side by side to us to solve current and future DOD requirements for compliance and security. Hey Ken, are there edge mission workloads that you can discuss? There are edge use cases for business and logistic processing that benefit from edge processing where the information is readily available at the speed of relevance. It's just as critical to solve problems ashore as it is afloat. You mentioned Project Lighthouse a moment ago, and I've heard a bit about Project Party Barge. Are these related? And how do they accelerate the Naval Edge strategy? The projects are very closely related. Lighthouse is the platform team and baseline within Black Pearl. Party Barge is a shared dev environment in the cloud instantiated off the Lighthouse baseline. With our choice of RKE2, we have accelerated many of the foundational compliance and stream needs for government usage. And as a plus to the RKE2 choice, the Susha Rancher Government Services Team have an amazing value add to our work. Hey, Ken. Thank you for giving us a peek into the Navy's Edge journey. We're looking forward to supporting you and the Navy with even more innovation in the future. But you know, it's not just the Navy pushing the edge of innovation with SUSE. Other branches of the military and our civilian first responders are benefiting from edge technologies as well. Let's take a look at what's happening in those spaces with Key Lee, Vice President of Digital Solutions, Booz Allen Hamilton. Key, thank you for joining us. It's always a pleasure, Basil. Key. You and Booz Allen have been at the forefront of Edge innovation for several years. Tell me a little about Booz Allen and why Edge is so important to your customers. Thanks, Basil. More than happy to. We started innovating on Edge because of a hypothesis and an observation. Our hypothesis was that with the prol proliferation of sensors and the exponential data that they would continuously capture, the current paradigm of bringing that data to some centralized processing would cripple the internet. Our observation, looking back at the history of IT, mainframes, desktops, servers, cloud, mobile, we observed that industry investing in infrastructure led to an evolution of IT. With industry investing in IoT today, Edge is that next evolution. It will introduce a new paradigm for the next digital ecosystem. So why is this so important to our customers? I want to borrow a phrase that Ken used a few minutes ago. Speed of relevance, I couldn't agree more. At the tactical edge, time is a weapon. If a soldier on the battlefield needs to wait for data to make a decision or is dependent on central connectivity, they will have limited situational awareness. Edge computing allows us to process at the point of data collection. 
we can short circuit that OODA loop or observe, orient, decide, act, so we can improve mission performance and minimize risk for those on the front lines. Is this what led you to Kubernetes and working with SUSE? Simply yes. Uh, Booz Allen has been a part of the open source community for years. We have a core member and a contributor of the Cloud Native uh, Computing Foundation and part of the founding class of Kubernetes certified service providers. We started working with containers before most people knew what a container was. We saw containers as an enabler to modernize from outdated monolithic architectures to a more agile microservice oriented approach. We adopted containers and Kubernetes as part of our edge computing solution from the start. This was important because of the unique environment where our clients operate. They use lightweight hardware that's small enough to be carried on a person or deployed on a sensor constrained by size, weight, and power. That small and lightweight hardware footprint requires an equally small and lightweight software footprint. As for Kubernetes, we chose K3S, which started with SUSE's Rancher. It's a small footprint, a streamlined distribution, and gives us the automated cloud to edge DevSecOps capabilities we and our clients need. Building a relationship with SUSE Rancher Government Services was just a bonus. So, where does Booz Allen go now with K3S and SUSE? That's the most exciting part, Basil. Our approach to edge computing, which we call Smart Edge, is all about creating an open edge ecosystem. Booz Allen's definition of open is both leveraging open source and applying open architectures to avoid bespoke vertical solutions. We've developed an edge computing solution that is open and containerized that enables a marketplace of sensors, platforms, data, and algorithms that we can plug and play and orchestrate to meet mission-specific requirements. The missions of our soldiers, airmen, sailors, and first responders are broadening every day. Heck, we even have the U.S. Space Force coming online. So Booz Allen is committed to going wherever our clients go, even to the stars, innovating to meet mission requirements. We can't go it alone, so quite happily doing a partnership with SUSE. Key, thanks so much for joining us today. It was a pleasure to have you. Hey, Basil, thanks for the opportunity and thanks for having me. Key out. Wow, from the seas to the stars, we have some amazing customers on our edge technologies, but we also have equally amazing partners. We've heard from Dell on how they're moving edge to the mainstream with a robust Kubernetes ecosystem. Now, I'd like to take a little glimpse into the future and hear from a partner who's really pushing the edge of the ecosystem into the realm of sensors, controllers, microcontroller class devices. Let's welcome Kate Goldenring, a core maintainer of Microsoft's open source project, Acri. When Acri was announced back in October of 2020, we were very excited to see Microsoft jumping into the tiny edge with this open source project. Kate, can you tell us more about what it is? Absolutely, and thank you for inviting me to be a part of SUSECon. As John from Dell mentioned a few moments ago, billions of edge devices are generating pegabytes of data. We're seeing this happen today from sensors and controllers that produce data and perform actions. However, oftentimes these tiny devices are too small to run Kubernetes themselves, or they can't be modified to run Kubernetes. So the question becomes, how then can edge Kubernetes clusters easily leverage these tiny devices? Acri aims to answer this question. It discovers IoT devices and advertises them as resources for a Kubernetes cluster. Acri provides an abstraction layer that removes the work of finding, utilizing, and monitoring the availability of things like cameras, sensors, and so on. Acri continually detects nodes that have access to devices and automatically can deploy your workloads to leverage the devices when they become available. What's really compelling about Acri, besides a cool name that means edge in Greek, and is also an acronym for a Kubernetes resource interface, is that Aukri is dynamic. It will speak the various device communication protocols and doesn't require a static connection between the IoT device and the cluster. It also handles intermittent connectivity of tiny devices and the scaling up and down of, de of tiny devices. Basically, you can connect any edge device, and with Aukri, you name it, Aukri finds it, and you use it. Well, you make it sound so simple. Acri addresses such a significant aspect of the edge requirements. What's the feedback and reception from the community and others? The concept really is simple, and judging by the positive feedback we're receiving, it shows that we are fulfilling a need. 
Aukery currently supports three discovery handlers for discovering local devices, IP cameras, and industrial devices. However, Aukery was built to be easily extended, so community members can easily add more discovery handlers in any language without having to touch any of Aukery's code base. We hope to work with the community to support as many tiny edge and industrial protocols as possible. This will obviously expand the number and types of devices Aukery supports, and we believe that this will make even more people interested in Kubernetes. I know the SUSE team are already interested in Aukery, especially since it runs with K3S already. What areas of collaboration do you see for Microsoft and SUSE at the Edge? Just like K3S and the new SUSE Edge, Aukery was built specifically for the Edge. It's a super small framework tailor-made to be lightweight and extremely scalable. Aukery plugs into the K3S instance to deliver Kubernetes functionality to devices too small to run Kubernetes themselves. So in a sense, Microsoft and SUSE are already collaborating. In the future, I can easily see us working together to connect the tiniest edge to the biggest cloud and data center. Uh, the future is unwritten, and I'm excited to work upstream in the Aukery community together. As are we, Kate. Thanks again for being with us today. It is really inspiring to see what our customers and partners are doing, whether they're in telecommunication, developing edge features for 5G, or in healthcare, working on edge requirements for remote di diagnostics and treatment. And of course, as we've just discussed with Gates, there are the dozens of industries ready for the tiny edge and the billions of devices that require monitoring and management. So, Dr. T, the big question. For our customers that haven't explored the edge, how do they get started? Well, first, explore Suzecon Edge World. There's a galaxy of information and insights, product and business sessions, technical sessions, and a hands-on opportunity to install and experiment with Slim Micro and K3S. Suzo experts will be at your side to help and talk about edge innovation for your company. Excellent advice, Dr. T. I've been on the edge of my seat this entire time, but now I've got to run. I want to be first on the shuttle to the Edge World sessions. Wait, what am I talking about? I'm beaming in right now. Thank you to our guests, and a special thank you to all of you for your time and attention. Please enjoy SUSECON 2021.